In this topic, we will be discussing about the mass extinction and biodiversity loss. And in it, we will be discussing about the Cretaceous and Tertiary event, which is the last known event in the Earth's history. In the previous topic, we, will be dis we were discussing about the extinctions and the KT event or as known as the Cretaceous Tertiary event is of most in attention, right? So it has the most attention from the media as well as the popular culture. Why this event is so much obvious in our cultural history? That's because it resulted into the extinction of the dinosaurs. As we know that dinosaurs were the reptiles which roamed the earth uh, in the Jurassic and Cretaceous era, they went extinct after the Creta uh, Cretaceous era. The KT event is intense, uh, was intensely sc uh, scrutinized since 1980 and what was the reason that it was so much scrutinized, we will be discussing that. And there are some reasonable theories behind the Cretaceous tertiary event. For example, the global climate change, change in the plant's impact, uh, the plant tectonic movement and sea level change. So impact means that there was some extraterrestrial uh, body which impacted on the global scale and it uh, resulted into the extinction of the most of the organism and which resulted into the mass extinction. In June 1980, a paper in Science by the Louis Orwell, uh, Alvarez and colleagues was published. And this was a very groundbreaking paper and it was a, one of the historic paper in the 19th, uh, 18, uh, sorry, in the 20th century. What did it discuss? It discussed about the possibility of a 10 kilometer meteorite or asteroid that had hit the earth. And as a result of that impact, the paper said that it might result into the extinction or, or may kick out an ex mass extinction event. The impact through a, a great cloud of the dust that encircled the globe and what would happen if all the atmosphere is in uh, having a cloud of dust on it on a global scale the result will be that sunlight will not be able to reach on the surface of the planet and the plankton in the sea and the terrestrial plants on the uh, terrain will not able to take the sunlight and due to the producers due to the extinction or death of the producer the whole ecosystem will be collapsed and that was the theory behind this paper by the Louis Alvarez and his colleagues. And due to this uh, groundbreaking paper, the media uh, and other people, other than the science, uh, science community as well, took notice of this paper and they studied about it. And they see, this paper seemed to be explaining everything regarding the KT event. An unusual clay band right at the KT boundary within a succession of marine limestone was discovered by the Louis and his sir, son Albert. Albert was a geologist while Louis himself was a physicist. So when he uh, discovered that there was a layer of iridium which is only found in the meteorites, he said that it might this clay layer might be result of impact of a meteorite and there and based on the uh, dust in the atmosphere and the thickness of the layer of the dust in the, uh, at the KKT boundary the dust layer he said uh, he calculated the mass of the crater as well as the mass of the meteorite that impacted on the earth and this re also resulted an iridium spi uh, spike. What is an iridium spike? Iridium is a rare matter which is found in the meteorite. But when the uh, meteorite impacted on the earth, that iridium was evaporated and it deposited all over the earth. And uh, where the, uh, in the iridium spike, the layer of the earth where the iridium content shot up from the normal background levels. 
there is less normal background level but at that particular small layer of the dust it was many times higher so uh, this result uh, resulted some of the prediction by the louis alvarez he uh, predicted that it would be a 150 kilometer crater which and what was the diameter of the meteorite that is 10 kilometer so in 1991, the crater was identified in Chicxulub in Mexico. And here you can see a map of the Mexico where you can see the location of the crater. So the KT impact site identified the location of the Chicxulub crater on the Yucatan Peninsula of the Gulf of Mexico. So where right now the Gulf of Mexico is, there was the impact and you can see the evidence of large waves in the circles so this evidence can be seen in the southern part of the united states as well as the shores of mexico and there were some non-marine evidence of the extinction which are shown in this diagram this resulted into a catastrophic extinction and this was the popular theory so this is uh, the popular theory in which all the plants and animals they uh, they were died due to the impact and why? Because they were not able to get the sunlight, the plants were not able to photosynthesize and all the ecosystem collapsed. And uh, the progressive, uh, after some times, uh, the, there was progressive return to the microflora. And here in this diagram, you can see the iridium spike and fern spike. So iridium spike means that in particular layer, there was an increase in the iridium abundance is shown in the parts per trillion on the x-axis while the depth in meters is shown on the y-axis. While on the other graph, you can see the abundance of the angiosperm or fern spores. As the angiosperm spores are decreasing down, the pollen spores are increasing after the extinction event. So the fern spores are increasing after the extinction even that means they had less competition and they were able to grow more after the extinction event. So there were some alternative hypotheses or theories as well. One of those were gradualistic model that meant that the dinosaurs themselves changed the environment in such a way that resulted into extinction. So extinctions occurred over long interval of time as a result of climatic changes and that might be due to the some ecosystem developed in such a way that resulted into extinction. And uh, that says that on land subtropical lush habitats with the dinosaurs gave way to strongly seasonal, temperate and conifer dominant habitats with the mammals. And this ultimately led to the extinction event. And the third school of thought is that there was some volcanic activity in the southern parts of the Indian uh, plains. Uh, the Deccan traps in India represent a vast outpouring of the lava that occurred uh, over the 2 to 3 million years spanning at the KT boundary. So at this event was happening at the same time there was some volcanic eruptions and as we know that volcanic eruption produce a lot of gases just like increased carbon dioxide which can result into the global warming and the climate change might also result into the uh, KT event but the most of the uh, paleontologists and other scientists they believe that it was the meteorological uh, impact that resulted into the KT event.